November is drawing to a close pretty soon. We still have some time to do a couple of quick things, though. Um, and one of the ones that I've had requested a few times for this uh, was the Count Yorga movies, which I, I think aren't, like, hugely well-known, but they do have an interesting little cult following. And, uh, yeah, let's take a look at this and see if this makes any sense. We're heading all the way back to 1970 for Count Yorga Vampire and was also known as The Loves of Count Yorga Vampire, which is kind of a weird title, but it isn't when you are aware that this actually began as a softcore porn film. Somehow though, Robert Quarry got a hold of the script and said that he would play the title character if they changed the film into a straightforward vampire story. We're set in modern day Los Angeles and True Grit has a billboard up and that came out in 1969. So that's a strong possibility of when we're set. At an old mansion in the hills, a seance is going on led by the mysterious Count Iorga who has an assistant named Bruda. And oddly, a license plate sticker shows the color for 1968. So uh, that might actually be our year instead, I don't know. There's a couple stuck on the side of the road, so they have a love scene, and I guess in the original script, just imagine this. But longer. The Count reveals himself to be a vampire, turning Erica here into a, a kitty cat eating vampire. Easily the worst kind. They figure out that Yorga is a vampire and plot to kill him, but the Count has tricks up his sleeves and three brides to help him fight. Heroic Michael manages to stab Bruda and tries to save his girlfriend Donna, eventually staking Yorga, who has a particularly dramatic death scene. He crumples to dust, but it's unfortunately too late, and Donna has been turned. One year later, in 1971, Count Yorga returned in um, the, the, the return of Count Yorga. It shows the old home from the first movie, and then we're at an orphanage, and a priest is talking about the evil, evil Santa Anna winds, which somehow reanimates the brides. And, and I love that little Tommy is being chased by the undead, but yet still goes back to, to get his ball. Yorga is also brought back, so we're dealing with the most evil gust of wind since the happening. What? No. Yorgi goes to the orphanage. Would you care for some punch? No. No, thank you. I never drink. Punch. He starts a biting, and I guess Bruda has also been resurrected. I mean, those are some serious wins, yo. They attack the place, zombie style, and Yorgs captures Cynthia to take as a bride. The police get involved, including Mr. Incredible. And was this guy ever young? I mean, seriously, Craig T. Nelson was the dad in Poltergeist over 10 years after this and looks around the same age. Strangely, we're in San Francisco now, even though we were clearly in LA in the last one. So does that mean that after dusting, someone took Yorgs remains up there? Or when we saw him in the beginning, was that not right after resurrection? Did like he get restored back to life and then travel up to San Francisco? Um, but how did all the vampire women get in graves up there? Would, have they just been there for a while and Count Yorga was like, I'm alive again. Let me go see how my San Francisco ladies are doing. I don't know. And then, Michael is back, but he, isn't he dead? I mean, and then wait, his, his name is David now, and he's Cynthia's fiance, so it's pretty clear that Roger Perry is playing a different character here. They bring in esteemed actor George McCready in what turned out to be his final role, and things escalate with vamp attacks, so David brings the police out to the mansion, and Bruda gets maced and shot with the coach taking one for the team. And then Daniel goes toe to toe with the Count, snapping Cynthia out of her trance. And she hits Yorga so hard with an ax 
that I guess it just it goes like all the way through him. It's it's an axe. We see an axe earlier, and now it's just like a pole or something. She just like I guess really jammed that in him. I suppose, but oh no, it's too late. Daniel's a vampire now, switching the finale of the last movie. So there's no date here and very little connection to the first outside of the presence of Yorga and Bruda, so let's just call it real time 1971 and, and two years have passed in between the films. So that was it for the series, uh, sort of. They did have a third entry planned, which would have involved Yorga alive again and in the sewers of Los Angeles feeding on the homeless there, but it never happened. And the curious bit is that there was a movie in 1972 called Death Master that sure seems like it could be a third entry. It features Richard Quarry again. He's playing a vampire again, wearing the same exact teeth he wore for Yorga, and it's called Deathmaster, and in the marketing for Count Yorga Returns, it calls him the Deathmaster. The poster straight up says the Deathmaster is back from beyond the grave. However, with all this, there is no actual connection between the two films. It's a different vampire, different story, different setting, and no story links. So if you really wanted to view it as a third entry, you know, it, it's not, but I suppose that there's enough uh, evidence for you to do so. So there you have it, it's two movies, or or three if you want to include Deathmaster, that don't link really too much at all. Uh, they do sort of give an explanation as to why Yorga and Bruda are alive again, um, but they just, they're just sort of there. They don't even show it to you. It's just kind of like they say that the winds are evil and uh, you're just supposed to assume that the winds have brought them back. Um, but both of these are pretty enjoyable. I kind of get a kick out of either one of them. The first one I think was the better of the two, um, but I enjoyed the second one. I, I, they, these both had that classic 70s vampire movie feel that I really enjoy. It's sort of Hammer-esque uh, without totally being Hammer. Um, and yeah, it, 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 they, were good, they were a good treat. You, if you haven't seen these, you, you gotta check them out. Um, if you have seen them and you enjoy them, let me know down below. Uh, let me know any comments you have about this video or about the movies and uh, yeah course hit that like button hit the subscribe um, hit the little bell if you want notifications on when new videos are coming out and share the video out there on public uh, so social media like link it connect it whatever you want to do and then check out my patreon page at patreon.com slash movie timelines and help support the channel like these guys over here do because you know they they like fun videos and uh, doing that helps get the videos made and and people watching also does so if you're just watching the videos thank you as well and i'll see you very shortly for another great one thanks guys Bye-bye.